speckled. Uncouth. What you're about to hear is for mature ears only. It's Miguel Fuller. I would show anything. I'd show my hee hee and my hoo hoo oh. and my ha ha. <laughs> Holly O'Connor. Hey, Daddy, you want to take this to the bedroom? <laughs> and Scotty the Body. I am officially not only the grill daddy, but I'm a hot grill daddy. Oh, wow. It's the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast. Only from Hot 101.5, Tampa Bay's new hip music. Well, uh, hello there, you platypus posse. We're looking Hi. fine. Uh, we are on the Miguel and Holly YouTube channel. We on the YouTubes. Mm-hmm. Have y'all looked at the YouTube channel lately? Yes. No. It popped up yesterday on my YouTube. <laughs> Did it really? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, I you know I have all the ones I'm subscribed to, and yeah. it, that's one of them that pops up. Oh, I love that. That yeah. makes me so happy. Yes. I subscribed to it too, and I wish I didn't. I I gotta unsubscribe. I think. Why? Because oh. we watch YouTube daily yeah. in our house, uh. as though it is the end all be all of entertainment television. Right. And let me tell you, like Tampa Bay Secrets pops up, and Maya's like, "Ooh, what's that? Is that cannot? No, oh, no, no, no. You no. go back to slime videos. No. <laughs> That's not you Mama. Can't find mm -mm. about this threesome. Oh, jeez, uh, craziness. Yeah, no. So I may have to unsubscribe, but I, maybe not. We'll see. Oh. I hope we're gonna lose subscriber. I'll stay subscribed. <laughs> I just don't know. And like, this is what's weird. I guess it when you subscribe to like a non kid safe channel yeah it just shows up anyway because i have the parental block on mm -hmm. which is like i'm not sure what the what the youtube guidelines are but there are some guidelines where if you're creating content that's good that's okay for kids you click that one tab and then it'll go to just like everybody can see it but if you have any explicit content it should be filtered out of my feed but yeah. ours is not yeah so i'm guessing I... it's just because i subscribe to it um, because I'm about to say, I click this is not for kids. I, I don't even care if it's throwback throwdown that I'm posting. I still say it's not for kids. That's probably best. Yeah, I don't want someone to just accidentally come across it. And no. honestly, you still have to be careful as a parent, which is it, it's just difficult. Like mm. I say this, like that we all in this struggle together, but it right. is difficult because even though we do have the the filter on, there are still some shows that will pop up because they're technically kid friendly, and then she'll be watching it, and I'm like. Uh, did they just say ass? Uh, turn it off. Oh. Turn it off. That's not for you. <laughs> turn it off. Wow. No, nope, sorry. That's not. You're not watching that. And there's a like she watches the weirdest stuff. Like she likes this one girl, SS Sniper Wolf. Oh yeah. And um, like we put a kibosh on it, and then like it slowly kind of trickled back in. And then it's not that she swears a lot, but just some of the scenarios are adult, oh. period. Like, it's not like the language or whatever, but it's some of it's just like, hey, this is not for a seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. So no. then we had to put the clamp down again, and then I'm like, don't go there. But it pops up, and I'm like, just don't look at it. And then there's another <laughs> one of adults, and she got real into this for a while, and then this is one with the ass thing, oh, where yeah. there's like five adults, and they make, they have a whole website where they make stuff, or they like put, old products back on the internet or whatever and then they just sit around in very like dry sarcastic tones and unbox things and talk about them and she's like invested and i'm like That's so what crazy the hell to me is this i don't even want to who's watching this mm. like what other Your adult daughter. yeah my daughter i'm like are kid are other kids watching this i don't know who the audience is for this but after i heard the one because they had some farting toy and they kept saying ass and then they said ass juice and oh, after that, for this kid video no it's not a kid video though it just pops up it's just it just pops oh one of the ones that is ass has gotten by the filter juice. and i'm just like nope not for you sorry turn it off that's There's gonna just, be so interesting y'all there is some weird shit on youtube that girl, she comes YouTube across youtube and also on twitter don't let her on twitter girl because there I is ever <laughs> let her on twitter uh, there's no she's probably gonna no. I don't know. When do kids these days, like, I, we've had the discussion, but like, when does she get her own social media? When does she get a okay. phone? So I have, oh, now I can't remember. Okay. I think, so I had this conversation with the mother of one of her friends. Yeah. We were like waiting outside to pick our girls up from Tumble and um, she's got a 10 year old and then a daughter the same age as Maya, who's seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously the daughters are friends, our daughters are friends. And I guess the 10 year old son comes home every day and is like, Mom, all my friends have phones. And she's like, 
who I know, I know your friends who has phones. And then he'll list like people that she doesn't know. And she's like, sorry. And so for her, she's like, I told him when he's 12, yeah. we can talk about getting a phone. And she's like, if you keep bringing it up to me, we're going to push it to 13. Because every okay, yeah. day he'll bring it up about how it's so unfair. And so finally, like she had a meltdown, I guess she was telling this story to crack me up. She's like, I finally had a meltdown because it was like the 17th day in a row that he was like, phone. and she was like, for what? And he's like, so I can talk to my friends. And she's like, and you know that other people can in infiltrate it. Strangers can pretend like they know you. And then they start talking to you. And then they find out where you are. And he's like, I would never tell anybody where I am. She's like, you don't think they can find you on your phone. They'll find you and they'll come kill you. <laughs> wow. Just put it. Wow. And he was like, I, how? I don't. What do you mean? I don't oh, understand the... how. And she's like, that's right. Mm -hmm. You don't understand how. And then meanwhile, the daughter was in the car too. And she was just like. I don't even want a phone. <laughs> so I'm like, good, let her daughter tell mine that phones aren't cool. So, like, it's apparently 12. Yeah, I mean, I feel yeah, like middle school would be a good age to get a cell phone because they can sort of kind of at that point understand what right and wrong and, like, you know, put the parameters around. Well, this is, if you give out your information, anything, this is what can happen, and they can understand even when you're not around them. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, when you're that age, like, you, like, I'm trying to think, when I was uh, 11, I was 11 in sixth grade, so I think seventh grade is when I started to, like, I always say it was, like, when my mind opened and I yeah. realized that, like, there was a world outside of school and home, and, because, well, for me, that was when we got MTV, <laughs> and um, I was, like, watch the real world and all these shows, and I was, like, oh my god there's all these people and things going on and then that's when i was like explore my body and i was like oh what does this mean what does that mean nice and so now i look back and i'm like you were a tiny baby oh my gosh yes. that's but the problem you don't think that at that age because that's when you are discovering stuff yeah um and so all you can do is just try your hardest because my mom was the same way i remember when we first got aol when i was a freshman in high school my mom was like if you even say that you live in Atlanta, they will come and they will chop <laughs> off your head and they will kill you yeah. and you will be murdered yeah. and they will chop up your body and leave you in different places all around the city. And I'll never even know that you were God. <laughs> that's one way to say it. Do you so, have to say that, though? I feel like that's pretty traumatic. Well, that's But, what? like, how do you else do you do it? So, right. like... You got to be... I feel like... I mean, I'm not a child But don't you think kids are growing up faster than y'all did? Unfortunately, yes, they are. Because she watches YouTube. She sees other she, things. All the time. Like, constantly. And I have to tell... And even it starts now. Because what she does watch, and I'm totally fine with this, there are a lot of, like, family influencers out there. And yeah. I could name you, like, probably 10 off the top of my head that we've either fallen in and out of love with or like we went on a hiatus with these people um her her most recent one that she absolutely loves is called a for adley and the dad i i like the parents in this video because some of the parents are like you can tell that they just wanted to put a youtube channel on and they're using their kids to do it mm. and they're either like they're kind of dicks or mm. they're like putting their kids in weird situations and i'm like I don't love this. Like, why? But the A for Adley family, like, I like their story. Like, I know their story. Like, I'm invested in these people. So, like, the dad, Sean, he goes uh. by Sean, Do Sean Doris on Insta and, like, YouTube and everything. He's, like, a video game developer. Oh. And I don't know what the mom does or what she did prior, but um, she'd been pregnant for, like, you know, seven years now. Oh, oh Her name's Jenny, pregnancy. and she's so, like, great and nice. And usually she's pregnant and sleeping somewhere. So, like, it's the dad that usually was just with Adley. And then they had a son, and then they had a daughter. So there's three of these kids. And what they do is they just do fun stuff with these kids, especially the dad. So he'll, like, set up, like, scavenger hunts. And, like, overnight they'll turn the house into, like, it turned into a winter wonderland. And so then the video, and it's all for content. Yeah. And then the video is Adley doing all of these, like, cool things. And they smash pumpkins at Halloween. Nice. And, like, it's actually really cool. But, again, with, like, with the internet, it's like, this isn't real life. Right. And because right. Maya, then, ever since she's been watching these things, like, she wants to, like, do all this crazy stuff at home and she's like okay and she doesn't ask me like she'll go in my tupperware cabinet or like my thing with like my glass dishes and stuff and she like takes all of them and like uses them for experiments and sets up this thing in the bathroom and i'm like oh no. my gosh i'm like oh, no i did not say you and then it sucks because she's like look what i did and i'm uh... like 
I see where you had the intention. I got that. You cannot keep using mommy's Tupperware. Like I'm missing lids and I, no. And also there's water everywhere. Where's the water coming from? And so she's like, but Adley's dad did it. And I'm like, Adley's dad, he's so fucking good. But I have to have this conversation. I think I said this before where it's like, hey, I know this is their real life. But this is also their job. Like, yeah. it's their job to put on cool stuff for their kids that look fun. And they do, like, a Disney princess makeover for the day. And they film it. And Maya's like, I'm going to do that. And I'm like, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mean, yeah. I wonder if there is a way to explain, you know, sort of like when you are watching TV growing up. And, you know, you realize that, though, like, that's a make-believe. Like, that's not real. Like, that's right. not based in reality. Yes. Does and she I understand try to do that, that? But you don't understand the problem. Like, if you've ever watched one of these shows, you understand the problem is that it is real yeah. life. Like, whereas the TV shows that we watched when we were kids, like, it was framed in a sitcom way. Like, mm. there was a laugh track. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It looked like entertainment. Right. I don't know if that was true for everybody, but it just, it it seemed like they were just situations that, weren't always like doable but this is like point of view camera and there is really a little girl really doing all this they rented a pony that looked like a unicorn for her birthday Mm -hmm. and i'm like again so i this is how i broke it down i'm like but see what they do that's their job it's their job to make these videos well i want to make videos (laughs) i know it seems cool but you would have to do it every day. Even if you didn't want to make a video that day, now it's your job to make a video. What oh, my if- God. You just described our job. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I'm like, let mommy tell you. I'm kind of in show business right now. Mm-hmm. Like, You're not kind of. You in show business, girl. She doesn't think that I'm in show business. What does she think you do? Like, what does she think that we come in and just sit around and... I don't know. I wish I knew from her perspective what it seemed like Mm. because she gets that I'm on the radio and that other parents are not. Mm -hmm. And she's come in here before, like before the pandemic, she came in and like watched what we do. Um, But it's like, but it's not she, like she listens to the radio. So she doesn't have an understanding of, like, the no, greatness of it. No. And it's also, the like, she, <laughs> right, she doesn't understand my greatness. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, she also watches, like, to her, those YouTube stars are way cooler than I would ever be. Because she sees it. She's, like, along. She's in that world. Yeah. My, like, radio. And she, like... Who takes her to school? So her dad takes her to school three days a week. And I'm sure he's listening to either Bobby Bones or whatever other country station. Mm. And um, the other two days a week, I don't think the mom listens to any radio. So it's like she's not getting that heat then. Right. And I don't I would not want her listening to Blown Off. Her classmates do. Oh, which I which find so weird. Crazy. Like the one girl came out and was like, what is the deal with Blown Off? And I'm like, I know people are crazy. Oh, wow. Uh. And I'm like, I get it. Like, the parents want to listen to it. But I'm like... So does she understand that, like, a lot of people know who you are? Yes. What, like, what does she say about it? Is she like, ugh, mom. You're embarrassing me. Or is it like, a, ooh, people know who my mama is. She picks and chooses whether she likes it based on how it benefits her. Oh, mm. that's smart. So <laughs> if it's like... Like, it can be too much where she's like... Stop talking about my mom. Like, mm. hi, I'm right here. So that's annoying. Right. Um, or it can be funny because she thinks that you two are very funny. Well, we I are. don't think me, but well, she thinks that y'all are, are funny. And then Does she um, still think I'm loud? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she so likes that. you though. What she oh, I don't I, I didn't mean to make this all about Maya, but last no, night, because she like loves TikTok because mm. all the YouTubers talk about TikTok. Yeah, so of course. Now she knows what it is. Mm-hmm. And she knows we do TikTok Tuesdays. And so she'll often want to either see it or help with it, which is not easy because we've had a real couple of sexual ones. And I'm <laughs> like, that's not appropriate. We're not right. looking at that. Which, how do you explain that your mom just did something inappropriate for you? Oh, mama know how to get sexy with a girl. Hashtag yeah. silhouette challenge. It's real awkward. Let me tell you that. I just mm-hmm. kind of brush it off. Um, I have to deal with that later. So I'm just putting it under a rug, basically. Right. But so last night, she was like, I want to see your TikTok from this week. And it was her. It was her and I. So I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I pull it up and we look at it. And then she's like, well, I want to see Uncle Miguel's one. I bet he kissed Abe. I'm like, <laughs> you right. So we watched that one. And she's like, who does Scotty kiss? Who? 
Who's got a kiss? Himself? Oh, oh. I'm like, he's the most savage. Did she say, what hussy did he wow. eat? <laughs> <laughs> so I showed it and she was like, oh, that's so funny. She thought it was hilarious. Oh, good. And then, Scott, <laughs> we went on an entire, could have been between five and ten minute journey through your TikTok. Oh, through uh, mine. Oh, oh, I do. Well, yes. Mm. She enjoys the ones with the dogs. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good. Some of them, she's like, what is he wearing? Good question. <laughs> I asked like, the same I'm thing. I'm like, you know what? We're going to go past this one. Yeah, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then did you, there was you one. Didn't, did you go past the silhouette challenge one where he's I all shirtless? did not bring that up. Oh. Good. Although we accidentally brought, and I had forgot about the, what was the one where we were like, had to flip all around, like pound on the ground. Was that a oh wop? the WAP challenge? Yeah. Oh gosh. Wop, oh wop. gosh. I forgot. Like. Do some wet. I forgot. <laughs> so we start dancing. I'm like, I forgot what this one. Oh, skip it, skip it, uh, skip it. Nope, nope. That one's just seven like, days a week. Let's go to the Christmas one. Oh, there's a sock. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, it. so she went all through Scott's TikTok. Then oh, we went cool. through a lot of Miguel's TikTok. So she just loves these short form videos. Mm. I'm gonna put out more TikTok. But getting to like the parent, like the is it cool thing? I mean, in some instances it is because she feels like it makes her famous by proximity. Mm. So like people come to her to ask about me, and she's like, oh, mm. oh my god, whatever. Let me my tell you about my mom. mom. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. She's got the insight. So she just likes to be the one that people are coming to. Oh, that's cool. So, that would be so cool. I don't to be know a kid how like that. long that's going to last until. Do you remember? Because we used to work with Mandy. Mm-hmm. And Mandy had a daughter, Bella, still does, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when Bella was, uh, maybe it was like late elementary, early middle school, Bella was mortified mm-hmm. yeah. that Mandy was on the radio. But then Bella was also at that time, was she was super shy. So I wonder because she was. Maya is not shy. No. So I wonder if that is going to play into anything because, you know, I, I feel like Maya probably will go into some sort of performative career, whether it's an entertainer no. or a lawyer or something where you have to prepare and deliver. Yes. Yes. And yes. so I wonder, you know, if she I mean, will she, take advantage of that. Remember, she's a Leo, too. Mm-hmm. So are you, Miguel. Mm-hmm. And Leos love the spotlight. Right. I, I like the spot. I love I love the spotlight. But then I also like to be left alone and sitting quiet by You're myself. You're just an odd bird. No, but she's like that a little bit, too, because mm-hmm. like she needs her like after she's had a weekend with her dad. And I think the lo- a lot of kids are like this when it's like daddy weekend. The dads often feel like they got to do stuff mm-hmm. because they don't see their kids that maybe it's like every every two weeks, like our situation. Mm-hmm. And so they feel like they either have to entertain or do something awesome. And it's like, go, go, go. And then when that's done, like on Sunday night or Monday, you know, Maya will come home and just be like, can I just watch you? Yeah. I don't want to do anything. Let's just have a day at home. She's got to have that recharging time, too. Right. Like you do. No, absolutely. I mean, this past weekend when I was in Atlanta and Abe was in Seattle and then I had to like rent a car back and drive from Atlanta to Tampa on Sunday and whenever I'm around my college friends, we drink like we're in college and Yikes. we're not. Yeah. Correct. We're 35 and that mm-hmm. was, you know, a long time ago. And so by the time Monday rolled around, I was just a wreck. I was just emotionally, physically just done. But Abe's best friend that he was out with in Seattle with came back with him and it was his birthday on Monday. And so oh, they yeah. were, Abe was like, we're going to do a little birthday dinner for him. And I was like, oh, God, the last thing. And then it was like, oh, his boyfriend's coming and surprising him. He's coming from Boston to surprise him. And I'm like, oh, God, there's like a new person. So you can't like be quiet. No. And like just sit there and listen. Yeah. You have to like engage because then you'll come off as like, why is Abe's fiance such a bitch? Yeah. God. Yep. God, I hate that. So then I was, I have to like be engaged. And so literally we were at dinner and probably the first, 15 minutes, I was like, so, oh my God, tell me all about Boston. He's a police officer. What's it been like? I had this love affair with Boston. And then like, as soon as the appetizer came, my body was like, we're done. And I just shut down. And so literally at one point, Abe told me this is what I look like. Everyone else is talking. And I was just like, Oh, oh God, dear! I was just, was I was, like I was done. I was gone. And if you're on the YouTube channel, our Miguel and Hell YouTube channel, you can see it looked like Miguel was watching paint dry. I was just like, 
Man. And so then after my food came, I mean, I ate, I literally, I might finish my last bite. And then I was like, all right, well, happy birthday, Tommy. Hope you had a great time. I got to go. Bye. Because I need that time to just be by myself and mm-hmm. recharge and just, I don't even know what it is. I just, I just need that time. Oh, it's, just- it, it's all part of it. It's all part of who you are. You're actually like an introvert, but because of the Leoness, you're like a lion and you like to be prideful and have your social circle and you're the ringleader but it's like the it's like the two sides of the same coin right you you have that then your pendulum has to swing the other way mm-hmm. and you cannot continue to put out that energy without recouping some of it whereas scott is like the energizer bunny and is just like okay well uh, hold on, because Scott is also 24, and True. he has the energy to do that. And I know that sounds like the most old person thing to say. No, but I love it. it. But it's true because when I was 24, I when I was like in my in my college years and post college years, I would remember like going home um, from breaks or like taking a little trip home or whatever. And I all I could do was I couldn't wait to go out. Mm. I just want to go out mm. and do stuff. Mm-hmm. And I would always, this is probably because I feel bad for my mom always, which I just need to stop. But I'd always be like, don't you, do you want to go do something? And she'd be like, no. Nope. <laughs> I'm like, and in my mind, I was like, I bet she's just jealous that I'm going out so much. Like, why don't they want to do anything ever? I get it now. Right. I get it. Oh. It yeah. just, it, it comes with age, unfortunately. And I don't think I don't still want to do stuff. But also I was worried at that time. I was like, what's going to happen when I have kids mm. and like they want to do stuff, but I want to do stuff. Is that like an okay parenting move? You know, mm. cause I didn't grow up with that. I grew up with a mom knew nothing. And so then I had a kid and then I was like, Oh, you're like, I get it. I get it. You don't even want to do something. Well, that's like at some times when uh, Scott and I are at CrossFit, cause we don't get enough of each other here at work and at All home. So we go to the same CrossFit I love class. It. Um, and then like, we'll be in the middle of a workout. No, it was specifically this week. When I was just, I've just been dead. I think today is the first day like I was, I've been alive on the show um, and in life. It's Friday. I know. Oh, dear. And okay. I literally, during the workout, I forgot what movement we were doing, but I like closed my eyes for a second and I felt my shoulders relaxed. Now, mind you, we're in the middle of like a 20 minute workout. My heart rate is probably, you know, like 160 beats per minute. And I'm just like, my shoulders relaxed, and I was like, I could fall asleep right now Good in the Lord. middle of this workout. And I look over, and Scott's like, hey, the sunshine. Oh, hey. How you doing over there? Yeah. How you doing, bitch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And literally, in that one moment, I was like, fuck you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish that I had that energy. And even on days, I'm trying to think, the last time I felt like really, really rested was the like three weeks or two and a half weeks I did dry January. And so we weren't going out. I was sleeping on the weekends and I'd go to CrossFit and I was still like, I'm tired. I'm tired. The only way we can do it now is with like supplements. Yeah. So I will do like a five hour energy. Like, okay. So for last weekend, we went to Orlando to, for Valentine's day, we did like an early dinner cause mm. early bird gets the warm <laughs> early dinner. And then, oh, but the plan so was we were going to go back to the hotel change and then go spend the rest of like the evening at Dave and Buster's, mm-hmm. which I find to be super fun. It's like mini Vegas. It's like Vegas without spending nearly the amount of money that you would spend at Vegas. And it's still like gambling. It's still fun. So, and we always like kind of do our separate things. So I had an entire five hour energy and had some Diet Coke. Oh, you loaded had, up. Oh, yeah. Girl, your I, heart was about to explode. Correct. Oh, careful. And then surprise to <laughs> me, um, my partner was like, we're going to do shots at dinner. I was like, oh, he doesn't even drink. Wow. And I was like, apparently we didn't chart all the way up. So we had a lemon drop shot at dinner. Oh, good Lord. And I had all that caffeine and the energy stuff. And so I was up in Dave and Buster's like, bing, 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 bing. He can't have all the caffeine. So he did not have the five hour energy. He did not have the Diet Coke or whatever. So after like an hour and a half, I was like, what games have we played yet? And he was like, um, mm. I know you're having like a fun time, but maybe pretty soon could we maybe go? The lights are <laughs> really bright <laughs> and there's so oh, much noise. Man, I was like, yeah, I just, damn it. 
I'm all amped up and uh, I'm borrowing tomorrow's energy for mm -hmm. this. So I need to make the most of it. So we stayed for like another 20 minutes and I bebopped around. And then the next day, of course, I was like, uh, I'm, de I'm dead. I've died. Uh, that was a rough Sunday and Monday. <laughs> Because I stole energy from the... That's what happens. If you want to be super pumped and energetic that night, you steal your future energy mm. and use it that night. And that means you're even more depleted. What's it like, Scott? I love it. Like, I notice how my brain feels when I'm at my absolute peak. And I think it's the greatest thing ever. But I mean, I I wish there was some other way for y'all. I really do. Like... We can do it. It's yeah, just I, a trade-off now. It's like well, making uh, a deal with Hades. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just like... You know, I definitely have my, obviously, my depleted moments. But, like, whenever I have those energetic, which is, like, 97% of the time. Oh, wow. I, like, I just utilize it, like, to the fullest. Absolute, like, go That's hard. That's good. In you the should. Paint. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm just, I don't know what's in my DNA. I don't know what's in my blood. But it's kind of like, like, my dad's very similar, too. Like, he doesn't, he's very high energy still. And always, like, just ga, ba, ba, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And so I almost think it's kind of like it's literally in my blood. Um, it might be hereditary, too. I think a little bit of it is because, like, that's just how I've always seen it. And even as somebody, like, you know, he's in his 50s. And, like, I get tired before he does sometimes. He's like, no, oh, we got to go do the law. I got to go do this. Got to go get on the boat. I'm like, oh, Lord, you don't stop. But he mm -hmm. doesn't. So mm -hmm. I think it's. I'm going to be curious to see what it's like in a decade for me. It might keep up for you because if that's the case with your dad, then and you're very similar to your dad. Yes. But I also feel like what happens is because I've always been that way. I mean, I was like a go, go, go type person. But then I just feel like after, you know, X amount of years of being sleep deprived. Well, that's the biggest problem that's here. The like, difference. That's the yeah. difference. Like, I feel like if I didn't wake up at three o'clock, three fifteen in the morning since two thousand eight. I outside of the six months that we weren't working, um, I probably would be the same. Like I, I feel like because I'm just a, I have a lot to do. Da, 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 da. But then it's like everyone's always like, oh my god, your schedule is so great. But there are literally a list of things that I have every day for like the house, personal stuff that I want to get done. But just my mind is just like. I'm done. I mean, and you've seen me on the couch, Scott, when you get home, because I get home now before you since you're doing you're covering for middays right now um, and you're on till three. And so you'll get home, you know, around then and I'll be on the couch and it's like I can't like my life is is, is frozen. That part to me, like that's the one thing about this. And I, we've talked about it before prior, but it's like I almost feel like as much as I love like radio entertainment or morning radio specifically, it's like that's the one thing that kind of gets on my like the bad side of it. Cause I'm like, is there more to life than just always being tired? I, mm. I do have the conversation in my head all the time. That's like, I think there is, I think there's a lot more than just, you know, waking up. So even though we have like a love for it and that's why it's just a constant battle of like, would you change it? Do you ever think about changing it? Because to live like that again, like I, I've said it on the podcast, but I have this fear in my head of like this one shot. And it's like, I don't want to use these good years and just constantly be tired. And that's the biggest battle I have now with going out with friends or going out on dates. And even if it's on the weekday, I'm like, screw it. I'm going now because I know in a decade I'm going to be probably more tired. I'm not going to do it. That's why I'm all for you doing what you're doing. And that's why I'm doing it. But it's like, that's the one worry about like, it's obviously not healthy, the low amount of sleep that we get. And then also waking up at, you know, 3, 4 a.m. So do you ever think about changing it? Is it something that like, I don't know. It just worries me because it's like these are well, it only gets a, like I feel like a decline from here. <laughs> right. Well, to, to me, the trade off is what else would I be doing that would bring me the joy that I get from a moment where we're all laughing and connecting Absolutely. or where, you know, making someone's day with a laugh. You know, what would be better? What what could I do that would bring me that much joy? And as of right now, I haven't found it. Yeah. But I do know that at some point. Because I used to always feel like, oh, I'm going to like I'm going to die on the radio. Like literally, I'm going to be 75. You <laughs> yes. know, hopefully we'd be at that point in our careers where they'd be like, you can do the show from anywhere at that point. Because by then, hopefully there'll be technology that I can just like hit a button on my head and, you know, I'll <laughs> pipe into yeah. Holly and Holly will be somewhere and I'll be somewhere we'll be like, right, ready, oh, let's go. That'd you know, pretty cool. Right. But like that was when also behind the scenes, when the people that we looked up to in the radio industry we're making a lot, yeah, a lot of money, a lot of money. And right. so then it was like, well, that's the trade-off. You know, like you put your body through the ringer 
all these years of doing morning radio, but then like the financial benefits of it are going to be huge. And so then when you're done, you can live your life and you can have fun. If you want to retire early, you can because you've made this money. But now that's not the case with the way that the industry's changed. Yeah. And so we're not making the salaries that they used to make back in the day. And so I feel like a lot, like our generation specifically of radio people that are in that like 28 to maybe 40 range, that thought 45 range that, you know, we were like, well, we'll look at all these people that made a lot of money. I'm going to do it too. And then our industry was like, ha ha, no, bitch, we got corporate debt. We got to pay off. <laughs> yeah. And so now we're like, ooh, do we really want to stay this whole time and sacrifice everything else because of it? I don't have an answer for that yet. I don't know. This is something I'm curious about because I have thought about it a lot. I think about it all the time when I'm like, Gosh, good. like you said, when you have a list of things to do at home, and I think a lot of people have this in general, just when you're just beat from the day and it's like, just never get to it. Just never get to it. And that, to me, I'm like, I am, I, I'm only been in it for a couple of years and I'm like, I just get so tired of being tired. I get like pissed at it. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, what the? F-? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm in my 20s. I should not be this tired at two o'clock in the afternoon to be able to do other things or other passions in general. So that's the only thing where I'm like, Hmm. Oh, no, listen, Ah. I totally agree. And I feel like especially now being with Abe and, you know, with our group of friends, they'll get together, you know, on the weeknight. Like we had our friends that wanted to invite us over this week for dinner. And I was like, Abe, you can go. I just I literally after the weekend and then the dinner on Monday, I can't. (laughs) Like, I need to be in the bedroom, in the bed by, like, 8.15. I can't. Ah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I just It's just I something don't know. That I've been wondering about. And I think about it for y'all, too, especially, you know, that you're, like, my next chapter. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm. It's weird. And I also, but then there's also, like, so many perks. There, right. Yeah, absolutely. That, you, that come along with this, even though the trade-off is tired and not being able to function sometimes in your life. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what other job could I be doing right now? Where I make the money that I do, I'm able to support my family. I can get my kid in the afternoons. Right. What? Right. What am I, I going to do? So I, I just, and I love it. I, I love doing this job. Um, yeah. No. I mean, obviously, I, th- I sort of that goes without saying. Yes. But I also feel like, what? How do I? How? What is my next step? And I haven't decided yet. And once I do, kind of like narrow it down. What is my life going to look like after that? Mm -hmm. And is it going to fit what I need it to? How does that work? So there's just a lot of questions that I think all of us sort of just go, too much for now. Let's just put that off for later. No, no. But it it, it will come, whatever whatever that looks like. Um, You know, I feel like it will become clear. But now, to me, I feel like I just continue to make our process of what we do behind the scenes better yeah to make our on-air process better i mean i feel like what we do every morning uh especially for holly and i has like every week every day i'm like what can we do better like mm. what every day i'm always like oh well maybe we can institute this new rule and we can do this to be better we can do this to better serve our listeners we can do this you know so it's like it'll never stop and that want for perfection and to strive to to be great will never leave me. It just yeah. may look different in a few years. And who knows what will happen to radio? I don't know what it's going to look like. Maybe Netflix wants to put us on video, girl. I don't know. Hey, Netflix, how you doing? Oh, so, you know, who, who knows? I'll get you some Botox before we do that. <laughs> Someone want to get me some Botox? Come hey, on. Girl. Needle up my forehead. Um, Before we go, I did want to read this um message that I got. Mm-hmm. That I want to revisit next week on the podcast. I'm just going to have to dig a little bit for some audio. Oh. This came from a Jill, a platypus posse. Jill? Member, Jill. She said, hey, girl. So I've been doing a deep dive into the old podcast and felt the need to reach out. I'm currently in 2017 and you and Mr. Silver Fox are brand new into your relationship. And if you don't know, that's what we used to call Abe, my fiance. Uh, It is such an interesting contrast to hear you back then versus on the daily now as you guys plan your wedding. I'm honestly shocked at how evident that it was you just knew immediately and that all roads would lead here to you two being together. Hmm. Listening to you before you started dating and then immediately afterwards, it's like someone flipped a switch. You were suddenly super confident, relaxed, and just happy and secure that carries through today, and it's really sweet to see. 
I am just so happy for you. When you have time, take a minute to go back to the September 21st, 2017 podcast. I think it's worth the listen. So I kind of want to go back and uh, pull some of that audio because that was so like, uh, really, how different was it back then? I'm curious. I never, I was looking for one specific thing. So I did go back to like to May of 2020, but I have not been back to the archives. No, they, I mean, they go back. I don't back. know if I want to. And I always find it weird when people are like, I'm just going to start at the beginning because I'm like, I've grown so much and I learned so much. Please don't take what I said because I'm such a freaking like know it all. Mm. So don't take what I said back then as how I still think now because I'm consistently learning and changing and growing. And sometimes it's embarrassing that I'm like, why did I think that? So mm. it's a, it's a weird to me. Right. That, like I just feel no, like. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I, that's the human process. Yes. If we sounded the same and our views were the same, in 2015 as they are right now in 2021 that would be a major issue like yes. they, they need to change valid um and i feel like that's what our society is going through now which is why i feel like i sometimes have like a giant mind f because i feel like we're seeing it change because everything at the beginning of our career was like new and fresh and like oh my gosh sort of what scott's going through now yeah. with you know, whenever we do a survey about here are the things that women like in men or here, blah, 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 blah. And it's like Holly and I are like, oh, girl, we've been talking about this stuff for the past 12 years. I like, trot this article out. It. But to you, it's yeah. all new and fresh. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's interesting to see that contrast. So I'm, I'm really thankful that Jill pointed that out because I do want to go back. And I, I think, think that'll it lets be you interesting. Appreciate how much you've grown, you know, when you go back and revisit those things. And we just happen to have an archive of that for the Miguel and Holly <laughs> Uncensored podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh, yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll have to check that out one day. But yeah, pull your audio. I'd yeah. love to hear that. All right, Scott, what's all your social media? At Scott Tavlin, S-C-O-T-T-T-A-V-L-I-N. Holly. Radio Holly on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Mine is Miguel Fuller, M-I-G-U-E-L-F-U-L-L-E-R on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And make sure to send me an email if you want some Miguel and Holly stickers for being a part of the Platypus Posse, Miguel at Hot1015TampaBay.com. Go ahead and yawn, Holly. I'm sorry, I got, I got a yawn in. I'm sorry. If you look at the video on our YouTube channel, Miguel and Holly, you can see Holly yawn at the end of the podcast. Sorry. Also, leave us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it on your Instagram stories when you do. Yes, definitely, because we we always encourage more m &H fan members to come Absolutely. on board. Absolutely. So uh, please, please, please share the podcast. Help us grow it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Catch up, catch, up, catch up with the previous episodes of the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast from Hot 101.5. Just hit up the Hot 101.5 app, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Search Miguel and Holly Uncensored. Uncensored.